Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story today is entitled Mountain Holiday. This is the story of Sergeant Joe Marinelli, a medical corpsman stationed somewhere in Austria, who by his army developed skills and through the warmth of his personality, helped build the structure of peace and understanding between peoples. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first, young man, here's news about an important opportunity for you. Right now, the United States Army, the senior service of our armed forces, has an urgent need for qualified technicians to operate and service the complex equipment that science has brought into being. The need is vital, and you can be trained in such interesting career fields as radio, electronics, radar, photography, meteorology, mechanics, and many, many others. Yes, indeed. Here's your chance to acquire a skill that will be of value to your country and help you later in civilian life, too. For full details, visit the recruiting sergeant at your nearest recruiting station today. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, Mountain Holiday. An army is often thought of in terms of pain, death, and destruction. An army is an instrument, the means by which the people of one nation apply force to the people of another. That is an army, or at least that is what an army has always stood for. It's an incomplete evaluation, an old-fashioned one that falls far short of the whole truth. For the American army is much more than that. It is rather a collection of people who live, play, and work wherever they may be called on to serve, and to offer the gifts of their skills and their understanding to their neighbors all over the world. Now, follow me on the map, Chuck. Here, this is where we are right now. This is the hospital. Mm -hmm. And we're going to take this road along the river until we reach the fork in the road. Then we turn left and start climbing up through these hills till we reach here. Now, here's where it starts getting steep. This is where the real mountains start. Well, it's going to be kind of rough on a bicycle, isn't it? Chuck, when you get out in that beautiful countryside and fill your lungs with that clean, fresh air, you're going to go up them mountains like a mountain goat. I don't know. Now, you just listen to me and everything is going to come out all right. All right. Now, we're going to get us an early start. Mm -hmm. I want to be off the base and on the road by 6.30. But 6.30? What's the matter with you? You crazy or something? 6.30? Chuck. That's a rush. These mountains aren't going anywhere. I'll be in the same place if we leave at 9 o'clock, too. Wait, Brain, you want to listen to some sense? You're just going to keep shooting off your mouth. 6.30? What's the use of getting a three-day pass if I got to get up before Reveille, huh? If you'd shut up a minute, maybe I could explain. All right, shoot. I'm listening. If we leave the way I'm proposing the first thing in the morning, we could reach the fork in the road by noon, and that way we wouldn't have to be pushing a bicycle around in the hot sun. Now, you see what I mean? I see what you mean, but I'm not convinced. Well, make up your mind. What's it going to be? You want to take a trip through the countryside, or you want to spend your three-day pass in the sack? All right, all right. We'll do it your way. Now nah, you're talking. And the way I see it... Marinelli. Now, we'll pack us a bag of sand. Hey, Marinelli. At ease, Wilson. Can't you see we're busy? I brought you a couple of new men, Marinelli. The Major wants chest x-rays on him, but immediately. I'll take him. I'll take him. What's a big emergency? Boy, will I be glad to get away from here for a couple of days. Toodaloo, you little old wandering gypsy. Get out of here, Wilson, before I... Ah, simmer down, sonny. You're gonna blow a gas. That's all I'm asking, Chuck. Just three days away from this place, that's all. Three days without doctors or patients or wise guys like that Wilson. 
for three whole days. I won't tell a soul to hold their breath. And what do you know about that? Sounds terrific. Chuck, you look the map over, and I'll shoot these guys, and I'll be right back. Right. What a deal. This guy must think I'm a St. Bernard or something. <laughs> Yes, sir. Group HQ wants some more x-rays on Major Wild. Yes, sir. I want to check that left apex again. I understand. Those special views you took last time showed the lesion up very nicely. Repeat the same shots. You say so, Captain. I think if I take another film on that guy, he's going to start handing out autographs. Save the wisecracks, Marinelli. I want you to take a PA, a Lordotic, and an apical film. Yes, sir. He'll be down at 10.30 tomorrow morning. But, Captain... Now, don't louse it up. It's important. But, sir, I got a three-day pass starting tomorrow morning and... Well, you'll have to leave after 10.30. The Colonel wants those films for the clinical conference tomorrow afternoon. I know, sir, but Bernstein can take them. He's learned a lot, and I'm sure he... You're going to take them, Marinelli. You're the best we have, so it looks like you're elected. But, Captain... I... 10.30, Marinelli. Yes, sir. 10.30. <laughs> Hot. Yeah, sure is. Joe. What do you want? Joe, I'm tired. Let's stop, huh? No, we gotta keep going. Yeah, but Joe, I can't breathe. I'm pooped. If you'd knock off on that shot, you'd have more energy for pushing that bike. Get an early start, the man said. An early start so we won't have to push the bicycles around in the sun. What is that great, big, shiny thing in the sky, Joe Baked Potato? Hey, you're off the sarcasm, Chuck. It wasn't my fault. Well, I'm not blaming you, buddy. I suppose it was my fault that the captain made me stay and take those x-rays. Oh, no. That's what you get for being the indispensable man. Now, a little old clerk like me has never missed. Okay, so I'm the indispensable man. Now, let's stop talking about hospitals, x-ray machines, or anything like that. I want to enjoy this pass. If don't stop soon, my talking days will be over for good and all. I'm failing fast. We still have another 18 miles to go. Oh, I'll never make it. All right. There's a little inn on the top of this hill. We'll stop there. <sighs> oh, that did it. That's all. Well, we're gonna get on another bicycle as long as I live. Hey, where's the bed? Joe, you see a bed any place? Relax, will you? Just sit quiet and enjoy the scenery. Well, I'm on the brink of uh, uh, a collapse, that's where I am, and you're knocking me out with the scenery. I'm really surprised. Yes, gentlemen. Hey, yes, see what I mean about the scenery, Chuck? Uh, uh, Fräulein, uh, uh, Fräulein, uh, uh, haben Sie eine, uh, uh, eine bet? <laughs> Your room will be ready whenever you like, sir. Would you care for some dinner first? That's the ticket. Ciao. I don't want to eat. All I want if is... If you gentlemen would care to follow me, the view is much more beautiful from the patio. Get a load of this, Chuck. You ever see anything as pretty as that in your life? Yeah, you're right, Joe. She's absolutely beautiful. I ain't talking about the mountains, muttonhead. Why don't you stick to the subject, why don't you? The uh, schnitzel is very nice today. Would you like that? You're the doctor. And some white wine? Good deal. Greta! Greta! Uh, yes, Peter, in a moment. Hey, the boyfriend sounds kind of impatient. Oh, my brother. He... Greta, how many times do I have to call? Oh, I see. We have American guests. Yes. Just a couple of poor, tired, hungry soldiers, mister. That's all we are. Poor, tired, please, hungry Please, uh, do not pay any attention to him here. Uh, uh, please, Peter, sit down and keep quiet. And we must be nice to our rich American guests, mustn't we, Peter? Peter. If we are at welcome for him, Oh, no, Sergeant, it is not that. Peter, will you please sit down and keep quiet? I'm going to fix the latch on the front door. I'm very tired, Joe, but I got a sneaky suspicion I'm going to have to belt that guy before we leave. Your dinner will be ready in a few moments, gentlemen. Look at that mountain, Chuck. Bet you it's 12,000 feet if it's an inch. Uh-huh. This is it, Chuck. Just take a whiff of that clean, cool air. I haven't got the energy, Joe. Try me later. Can't get over it. No, sir, I just can't get, get over it. Get over what? This. Everything. The works. Think of it, Chuck. 
Just four months ago, I was sitting in my mother's kitchen in the Bronx eating a plate of ravioli. And I was taking a nap after... And now look at me, eating Wiener schnitzel on a patio with an Austrian Alp staring me right in the face. Who'd have thought it possible? Did you enjoy your dinner, gentlemen? Ah, now, that's what I call charm. Yeah, that was all right, Miss... Uh, Greta. Uh, Greta. Plenty all right. I'm glad you liked it. Say, uh, Greta, I was wondering if you could tell us what there is to see around here. You know, the sights. Well, there is so much to see in our mountains. Uh, perhaps you would like to climb one. Oh, nothing doing. I'm not climbing any mountains. He doesn't like mountains. Hey, I do, Joe. I like them better than you do. Well, I'm... I certainly do. I think they're beautiful. Okay, for argument's sake, let's take this mountain right out here. Now, that's beautiful, isn't it? Sure is. Yeah. Now, suppose we get up tomorrow morning and decide to climb it. Oh, I would not advise it. There, there is a storm coming up, a bad one. Uh, this is only for argument's sake. So, um, we start climbing. We're puffing and sweating. It's hot. We slip and fall, skin our knees, and, well, I don't know what. Now, what I'm trying to get at is it's a pretty rough job. You get me? No, it is. Okay. And finally, we're on the top. We're on the top of this beautiful mountain. You know what? What? We can't even see it. Now, if I'm so crazy about this terrific mountain, what's the point of knocking myself out to get to a place where I can't even see it? Go on, tell me that, huh? I think you Americans are all crazy. I really do. Peter, Peter! <laughs> oh, oh, what is the matter, Doctor? Is something wrong? Over here! Doctor! What has happened? A uh, Hans Dorfman took a party out to climb the North Face, and they are now eight hours overdue. I'm afraid something has happened. Hans is old. He shouldn't be guiding parties anymore. You are the only one, Peter, the only one who can get them down. I wouldn't ask if there were anybody no. else, but... No, he will not go. There's a storm coming up. You must not ask him, no. Greta, don't excite yourself. It is the same, the same all over again. Papa was the only one, too, and then he went once too often. Peter, I do not want the same thing to happen to you. I promised Papa that I would not let it happen. They are a party of American tourists, Greta. They are helpless without an experienced guide. It is not our responsibility. I do not want you to go, Peter. American tourists? Yes, I will go. Well, what's a big deal in getting down? Getting up is hard, okay, but getting down. Um, if I had someone to come along with me, it wouldn't be too bad. Peter. Don't worry, Greta. Uh, how about you, gentlemen? How would you like to come along and help rescue some fellow countrymen of yours? Nothing doing. I get a nosebleed every time I visit my sister. She lives on the fifth floor. And uh, you, Sergeant? Well, I'd like to go. But I didn't come prepared. Oh, uh, we have equipment. Peter, stop it this instant. No, Greta, I rather enjoy this. Well, Sergeant, what do you say? Well, I wouldn't want to get in your way, Peter. I don't know too much about these mountains. And... If you are afraid, Sergeant, we will forget the whole thing. I think I'll pop him now, Joe. This guy's gone far enough. No, wait. He's asking for it. This talk is getting us nowhere. I will be ready to leave in 15 minutes, Doctor. Good. There's something about this I don't quite understand. No? I suppose you would understand it quite well if it had to do with, uh, say, with the cigarettes and chocolate bars and uh, wisecracks. That you would understand, I'm sure. Why must you be so disagreeable? I can't hold out much longer, Joe. This guy's really asking for it. What I don't understand is why you're going on this trip altogether if you feel about Americans the way you do. Because it is my job, Sergeant. Does that make sense to you? Somebody else will get them, Peter. I have a feeling that you must not go. Look! Look, Peter, a distress flare. There, just north of the notch. I will leave immediately. Hey, Pete. Yes, Sergeant. Pete, you know, that does kind of make sense to me. I think I'll go along with you, just for kicks. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, Mountain Holiday. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. With men who know the Army, it's the job you do that counts. Take the yard brakeman, the dental technician, the petroleum chemist, or the weather observer. They're all soldiers like me. Why not make use of your skills in the Army? There's a job for every specialist and technician and a need for his special skills and a satisfying career for you with those special skills. Visit your local United States Army recruiting station real soon and learn about the benefits you can have when you enlist in the United States Army. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. Now we present the second act of Mountain Holiday. <laughs> Thank you. 
And so they made their way, the GI medic from the Bronx and the young Alpine guide whose heart and mind were filled with bitterness, past the safety of the timberline into the clean white world of wind and snow. What's the matter, Pete, you poop? The wind has changed. I don't like it. The storm will break a lot sooner than I expected. So we'll all get wet. What's the big deal? <laughs> Is that all you can do, make wise cracks? Is everything in life just one great big joke? Uh, okay, let's knock off the chatter and get this thing over with. You're beginning to irritate me. I'm not interested in this conversation either, Sergeant. I just wanted you to know what our storms mean here in these mountains. They're cruel, bitter things. Avalanches, buried villages, and winds that can sweep a man off the face of the mountain. You will think that the world is coming to an end, Sergeant. A brutal, senseless end. Now what am I supposed to do? Fall away in a dead faint? You're supposed to think and understand. How was that done, Pete? With a heart full of bitterness and hatred? Is that the only way? My attitude is none of your business, Sergeant. I just wanted you to know what the situation was. Okay, so now I know. Let's shove off. Oh, oh. oh Peter. Peter, you came. Oh, I, I don't know how to thank you. Forget it, Hans. What happened to you? Oh, I'm a stupid old fool, Peter. I should have given up the mountains years ago. Oh, nonsense. You know these mountains better than any man living. Oh, I am too old, Peter. What happened, Hans? My leg. I am a clumsy old fool. I slipped. Let's have a look at it, Bob. <laughs> rest, Hans, rest. We will get you down to Dr. Strauss. He will fix you up fine. Uh, no, Peter. I will never climb again. Uh-oh. This is going to take a little doing. Let him alone, Sergeant. I will take care of this. Uh, just how are you going to do that, Pete? We will carry him to the refuge on the east slope. We can make that before the storm breaks. And then in the morning... Look at this, Larry. What do you know of these things, Sergeant? This is not the American Army, Sergeant. Here I am in charge. You can be the Admiral, the General, and the whole Chief of Staff for all I care. All I know is that the bone fragments have done something to the circulation in this man's leg. If we don't do something about it in a hurry, he's going to be in serious trouble. Oh, so now you're a doctor. I see. I'm not a doctor, but I'm going to take care of this leg the best way I know how. We have to get to the refuge before the storm breaks. And if you get in my way, I'll knock your teeth right down your throat. Now rip that canvas into strips and take the steel ribbing out of that pack. I think they'll make pretty good splints. You better know what you're talking about, Sergeant. I am holding you responsible if anything goes wrong. Good. Now, Pop, this is going to hurt, but it's necessary. You ready? Yes, my boy. I am ready. I'm going to straighten your leg and put a little traction on it. Yes. Maybe that way we'll be able to restore the circulation a little. Yes, I am. Now, hang on, Pop. Here we go. Just a little at a time now. You see? Oh, oh, enough! He can't stand anymore, can't you see? Just a little more and then we'll be finished. Oh, oh. He's fainted. Yeah. Get the smelling sauce out of that kid. Okay, Pete, give me those metal snacks and the canvas strips. Now you hold his legs steady while I put them on. <laughs> Okay, I think that'll hold until we can get him down. We will have to carry him. It won't be easy. Well, lead on, Pete. You're the boss now. We could make it to the refuge and wait there until it blows over. We ought to get him down as soon as possible. He's in pretty bad shape. I know. We might try to make it down from here. Well, what's the problem? We might get caught in a storm that could be very dangerous. I see. I would take the chance myself. But you and the others, I... <laughs> I don't know. What do you say, Sergeant? What do I say? I say let's stop Gavin and get on back to the village. Yeah, we did get to finish that dinner. Good. We can make a stretcher out of this piece of canvas and carry him. Mr. Foster and I can carry him to start. You lead the way. All right. But remember, it won't be easy. <laughs> How 
Let me feel, Mrs. Foster. Do you want to scrap a while? Why, oh, I'm fine. How is Hans? Not too good. If we can reach the timber line before the storm gets any worse, we will be all right. Okay, let's go. <laughs> We made it. Now I think we had better rest a few minutes. Hey, uh, set him down here next to the tree. Yeah, there. That's it. Oh, oh, it's so good to sit down. Hello? Hello there. Listen, someone's coming. Hello? Over here. Hello, is everything all right? Yes. That is, I don't know about Hans. Well, let, let me see him. Oh. That's a very nice flint. How'd you find us? We picked you up on the binoculars. Oh, a goony racket. Anybody who'll come out of their own free will and climb around in this wind and snow can't be in the right mind. Boy. Uh, we'd better take him right to the clinic. Looks quite bad. But you will fix him up, Dr. Strauss, won't you? I will do whatever is possible, Greta, when we get back to the clinic. Whatever is possible under the circumstances. <laughs> How is he, Doctor? Uh, he's resting now. His leg? Will his leg be all right? Uh, he's an old man, Peter. We'll never climb again. Hans will die if he has to stop climbing. I did what I could. He will walk again, maybe good, maybe poorly. I don't know. What do you mean? The fragment's in good position? I uh, can't be sure, Sergeant. It's a difficult fracture. Just can't be sure. Well, take an X-ray. You can tell that way immediately. Uh, uh, X-ray? We could take an X-ray. That, that would be a different story. Isn't there any equipment here at all? Uh, we have an X-ray machine here, but it hasn't worked since before the war. It's a poor village, Sergeant. We can't afford. Well, what to... about an open reduction? No, I, I wouldn't take that chance. Not in good enough condition. But there must be something, Doctor. Uh, Hans will get better, Greta. He will walk with a limb, maybe with a cane. It's the best I can do. That uh, X-ray equipment, Doctor. I'd like to have a look at it. Hey, it's. Uh, it's in here, Sergeant. Follow me. Uh, here, wait until I get these canvas covers off. Hey, not bad, not bad at all. Four-wave rectification, 300 millis. Nice looking outfit. Yes, but the valve tubes are gone. The fluoroscope is broken, and uh, just look at it. It's a mess. I see. This is pretty well shot, but... Uh... Doctor? Doctor? In here, Greta. Oh, well, there you are. Doctor, if you could get a look at what's going on in that leg of Hans, you think you could fix it up pretty good? Oh, I'm sure of it. Oh, if only you could. Well, it's nothing like trying. I don't think I'll be able to do anything with the X-ray machine itself, but maybe using parts from both units, I'll be able to rig up a temporary fluoroscope. How'd that do? That'd be fine. Well, I'll need some tools. Uh, that American has a great deal of confidence in himself. You do not think he will be able to fix it? It's impossible. <laughs> I am afraid your sergeant is a fraud, Greta. He's been fooling around with that machine for almost an hour now. Oh, do not hate him so, Peter. He is good and he is trying. I don't think he knows any more about X-ray machines than I do. Uh, right away, the doctor. He is in with Hans in there. Doctor, right. Shh. He's sleeping. I gave him a sedative. Well, it's ready, doctor. You can use the fluoroscope now. I think he will be all right. It is ready, you mean? Well, I couldn't squeeze more than four milliampers out of her, and that intensifying screen doesn't give off much light, but I think maybe you can see enough. But, but... I don't believe it. This is impossible. Well, let's just wheel Hans into the X-ray room and I'll show you. I knew it. I knew he would do it. We all thought it was nothing but a pile of junk. Turn the lights out, Clever. Now, as soon as your eyes are accommodated, Doctor, we'll start. You better let me handle the switch. I'm having a little trouble with this auto transformer and the circuit breaker pops out. Aside from that, works like a charm. The lights are out. Uh, you feel his pulse and listen to his breathing, Greta. If there's any change, let me know. Uh, let's get started. I don't want to keep him under the anesthesia any longer than necessary. Uh, 
Das ist wonderful. Look, look, Greta, how clear. How's it look, Doctor? See what you need. Oh, it's like seeing for the first time. Uh, look there, this, this fragment of the tibia. It's in a bad position. Will you be able to fix it, Doctor? Uh, yes, now, of course. Now I can see what I'm doing. I think I'll have to turn it off for a few minutes. This auto transformer is heating up a little too much. Oh, it, it is not broken again. Oh, no, honey. It just needs a little babying. Now let's give it another try. Good, good. Now if I can align these two fragments and apply a little traction this way, I think everything will be all right. Look, he's coming to... Hans, Hans, how do you feel? Uh, uh, what is the matter? I, I feel so... You just rest, Hans. Everything is going to be all right. The sergeant, Hans, you owe it all to oh, him. Oh, slow down, honey. I didn't do anything but patch up an old machine. There wasn't anything special about that. Sergeant, I... Sergeant, I, I would like to... That is, I... Well, what's up, Pete? Spit it out. I would like to apologize for what I said and for the way I behaved. I, I was mistaken, badly mistaken. You must come back again, and I, that is, greater, and I will really show you our mountains. There's much to see and do here. Isn't that right, Greta? Yes, Sergeant, we would. Joe, the name is Joe. Joe? Well, then, Sergeant Joe, we would be very happy if you would come and visit us again as soon... We? Us. Uh, we. Uh, that is to say, uh, me. I'll remember that, Greta. And I'll be back. <laughs> The U.S. Army needs men. If you're a high school graduate, you can join now. And after basic training, apply for assignment to any Army school for the finest technical training. Now, if you qualify for the school you select and come within the quota, you'll be assigned to it. But however you choose to serve. It's service that means a special pride, the sense of a job well done in a man's army. Young men between the ages of 18 and 34, men who look to the future, are now choosing the United States Army. Visit your nearest recruiting station today and grow with the world's greatest army and the opportunities it offers you. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail. Presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army. This is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>